Welcome to Dave's Tech Table. We've been hearing a lot about GPU acceleration and what it could mean for video editors. With NVIDIA's new Quadro CX board, NVIDIA has designed this card with the production premium CS4 user in mind. With support for Premiere Pro's H.264 encoding for Blu-ray and a 30-bit color-ready display port, it even has an optional SDI add-on board for high-end workflows. But NVIDIA didn't stop there. They've got support for After Effects and Photoshop CS4, You'll see features like depth of field, turbulent noise, nested comps, and even the new cartoon effects. These effects will come alive on the Quadro CX board. Let's install the plugin and jump into Premiere Pro CS4 and see how to take your creativity to the next level. Let's start this demo by installing the Quadro CX software. The first thing I would do is click on the user manual just to get an idea of what's involved in installing the Quadro CX card. This will give you a much better idea of all the different things the Quadro CX card can do for your system. It's a 39 page manual with lots of useful tips and information. Information about DVI to display port adapters, SLI technology if you're curious about adding more power to your system. And of course, information on the Rapid HD encoder for Premiere Pro. The next thing you're going to want to do is install your driver. The next step is to install your Quadro CX encoder, which is the encoder that Premiere Pro will use, which is known as the Rapid HD Accelerator. This is the plugin that works with the Quadro CX card to give you accelerated H.264 output for Blu ray and other H.264 formats. Make sure to take the time to look at the new CS4 Super Guide written by Colin Smith of Photoshop Cafe. Lots of great tips in here on all your favorite CS4 applications. Colin goes over tips and tricks in the applications as well as some settings for OpenGL cards like the Quadro CX. Let's go ahead and jump into Premiere Pro CS4 and show you exactly what the NVIDIA Quadro CX board and the Rapid HD Accelerator plugin can do for your H.264 exports. Once you've completed your sequence and you're ready to export, it's just a matter of going to File, Export, Adobe Media. And you'll notice I've already selected it for Adobe's native H.264 Blu-ray export. My particular project is a 720p 24 frame project. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it at the default settings, which is high quality, and go ahead and just click OK and send this to the background to Adobe Media Encoder. I'm going to go ahead and bring the Media Encoder forward for you so you can get a better idea of what's happening. With the new Adobe Media Encoder, you can actually queue up all of your individual sequences and bounce back and forth between Premiere and the encoder and hit Start Queue whenever you're ready. Encoding will happen in the background. It's good to note that the new Adobe Media Encoder actually runs independently of any other Adobe application. So you can choose to leave it in the background or just run it by itself. I'm going to go ahead and hit Start Queue, and you'll see the Adobe Media Encoder take right off. Okay, and you'll notice that took about 3 minutes and 40 seconds to complete. Let's do the exact same sequence with the same setting. So File, Export, Media to bring up the Media Encoder interface. Under Format, you're going to go ahead and select ETI Elemental Technologies Rapid HD Plugin. Go ahead and pick the preset that matches your needs. Again, I was working on a 720p 23976 project, and the quality is already set to high. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Let the media encoder queue up and just go ahead and start the queue. You'll notice a dramatic difference between the time that it took to use just the native processor on your machine versus using the new Quadro CX card. It's really fast. You'll notice that the elapsed time is 1 minute and 8 seconds. Let's go ahead and launch Encore CS4 and I'll point out a few useful tips and things to look for. I've got a project here that already has a few menus created. Let's go ahead and import the Rapid HD files that I've got sitting on my desktop. There's two of them. You've got a .264 file, which is what it created, and the default for audio is AC3. So I'm going to select both of these and tell it to import. The quickest thing to do is just shift select each one of these and then right mouse click and say create new timeline. 
One of the things you want to check for inside of Encore once you've imported your material is to make sure that your Blu-ray transcode settings say don't code. This actually is telling Encore that these have already been transcoded and there's no need to go through the extra work. Again, Premiere Pro with the NVIDIA Quadra CX card has already done all that work for us. This will save a lot of time when building your Blu-ray disc. The next steps are fairly straightforward, just normal Encore authoring steps. If you double click on your menu, go ahead and set a few chapter markers. And then just drag and drop these chapter markers or scene markers to your menu. And once you're done that, go ahead and set your end action to go back to your menu. Check your project and go ahead and burn your Blu-ray disc. Let's jump into Photoshop and I'll show you where the settings are inside of Photoshop when you're using the Quadro CX card. Just go to Edit, Preferences, Performance. Make sure that you've got the name of your card. Enable OpenGL Drawing. You can even go to Advanced Settings if you'd like. These settings are pretty much set automatically for you, but this is where you interact with the OpenGL card into After Effects and show you where the OpenGL settings are in After Effects CS4. The first thing you're going to want to do is go to Edit Preferences, Previews. And what you're looking for under Fast Previews is your OpenGL setting. This box should already be checked. You can also go to the OpenGL info and set your texture memory to roughly 80% of the onboard memory of your graphics card. The Quadro CX card has 1.5 gigabytes of RAM or 1,536 and you multiply that times 80% and you get 1228. By setting your texture memory to 80% this is going to make sure you're using the maximum amount of RAM on your card again up to 2 gigabytes of RAM on the card. And you'll notice when I play this particular clip back that has the cartoon effect applied I'm getting beautiful playback. And it's already rendered that fairly quickly. And that's a quick look at the Adobe Creative Suite 4 Production Premium and the NVIDIA Quadro CX board. For more information on this exciting new NVIDIA technology and how it can make your Adobe workflows even faster, make sure to visit NVIDIA's website, nvidia.com slash built for Adobe Pros.